working with Reserve Bank of India from 1962 to 67, we were under tremendous influence of Nehru and ideology. And that was quite natural because the surroundings in the Reserve Bank of India was typically uh, supportive of that kind of a thought process. And uh, for us, we were being told during those days that at the age of 20, if you are not a socialist, you need to examine your heart. And therefore, all of us were typically emotionally being driven. Uh, we were more guided by the socialist thought process. My journey towards liberal thought came very much later. Till about 1974, I was typically a, a socialist minded in thought process. In 1967, I joined Tatars. Although in my early stages of career, I would have probably been influenced by what the private sector is trying to do. And there was giants like Mr. Palkhiwala, and we used to hear about A.D. Shrop. We used to hear about the Forum of Free Enterprise, um, Mr. M.R. Pai. And I used to attend some of the public meetings. But nevertheless, I never got uh, really impressed by what was being done there. Uh, and I used to read Economic Political Weekly, and those, those were the days when Economic Political Weekly used to be quite attractive for us. Uh, also, my colleagues from the uh, university, they were also, by and large, uh, of uh, leftist orientation, by and large. And uh, although there were a couple of professors, uh, like Professor Brahmananda, C.N. Vakil, uh, they had a different thoughts, even on the second five-year plan. For, for example. Um, but nevertheless, I think we never get, got uh, very much uh, sort of impressed by the liberal thought process. And uh, I never got even, in fact, you will be quite surprised that 1969, when bank nationalization took place, we were the ones who sort of appreciated that kind of a step but while, uh, while working with Tatas. And that was quite, uh, quite, quite uh, 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 I mean, not in tune with uh, the prevailing scenario. Uh, then uh, the whole process went on till about the emergency was declared. Uh, around that time, we started reading about what's going wrong with the public sector enterprises, how the third five-year plan has failed, and then how the plan holidays are getting uh, announced. Planning commission was not becoming effective. Uh, the Nehru in ideology gradually was losing some kind of an appeal for the youngsters. So somewhere around after that emergency, we started thinking about a different uh, uh, thought process and that's how the liberal thought process uh, sort of started guiding my own thinking. Uh, and then I got in touch with uh, uh, Raju and then also the for Forum of Free Enterprise and that's how the, the influence started gathering momentum. And then I started also addressing some of their uh, public meetings on very uh, so, uh, interesting but not necessarily uh, deep thinking kind of uh, uh, public uh, meetings. Uh, uh, so the, uh, gradually uh, we started feeling that uh, there is nothing great about uh, the erstwhile socialist thought process. It has not done anything for the last uh, previous 20 years since the beginning of five year plan. And therefore, I think we need to think in terms of something which is a uh, better alternative for the, uh, for the economic system. Uh, we started analyzing what, what is going wrong with the public sector enterprises. And then the, there was a Professor B. R. Shanoi's uh, wonderful speech and articles on the uh, public sector vestige, uh, wherein he tried to sort of uh, articulate how the public sector has not done the kind of uh, things which were expected. But he had a fundamental issues also. And those fundamental issues uh, about uh, public sector uh, is not the thing which is right for this, uh, for the, for this economy. The, 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 uh, the idea of government is, needs to be quite different. It has not to be in the business, the, the business of the uh, go uh, government is to do the governance and not to be in the business. So those ideas started sort of you know, attracting our attention and we started believing in those ideas. Uh, we also saw that uh, 
private sector by and large has started doing a, a lot of good things and uh, having worked with Tatas and then that was a, a interesting uh, experience because before the uh, reforms process started uh, we were used to sending the memorandum to the government and memorandum on what issues on licensing policy memorandum on monopolies restrictive uh, practices act and uh, uh, it, it will be quite uh, sort of you know uh, uh, people won't believe that during those days uh, a, a group of enterprises which had asset together of 100 crores were considered a concentration of economic power. Now there are small medium sized companies nowadays which invest 100 crores. But during those days uh, Tata Steel, Tata Motors, Tata Chemicals, all these companies got interrelated and by virtue of their interrelationship they became a monopoly house. And being a monopoly house uh, we used to approach the monopolies commission whenever the applications were being made for uh, for some industrial license. Uh, the classical example was when Tata still wanted to expand its capacity I believe from 2 million tons to 3 million tons. For that extra 1 million tons you had to, uh, your application used to be held up. Uh, it used to go through the licensing committee from licensing committee to monopolies commission and uh, uh, the whole thing uh, often times gets scuttled. Uh, there never used to be uh, things which were granted uh, uh, easily. Uh, uh, similarly, when the Tata Motors wanted to expand their capacities, I thought it was 12,000 numbers they were producing commercial vehicles and they wanted to increase it by another 8,000. There was a whole lot of capacity uh, in terms of infrastructure which was there. But the uh, Tata Motors was uh, denied that. Uh, so those were the days. Uh, and uh, you know during those time I think uh, uh, the uh, uh, Jadi Tata, the chairman of the Tata group used to write in his uh, chairman's statement uh, stories about how the, uh, how the companies have been denied the opportunities of expansion and growth. Uh, in fact he wrote on the uh, question about entire pricing policy for state and that pricing policy uh, led to of course creation of black market in the steel uh, sector. But the companies were denied the opportunities of generating enough of profits by pricing the steel depending upon the market conditions. And he said that if they were given the right kind of prices, probably the Tata steel would have been able to expand its capacity multifold. Uh, and uh, we were importing steel and the domestic producers were denied uh, the uh, opportunities to expand their production only because there will be so called concentration of economic power. Effectively that kind of a system created uh, huge opportunities for black marketeers and there used to be queues uh, as many people would be aware, uh, queues for uh, cement uh, bags to be made available, steel supply being made available for construction activity, uh, then there is a shortage of uh, two wheelers, people used to stand in the queue for eight years and uh, my own personal experience about my telephone. My telephone, I, I made an application, it took seven years for us to get the telephone and when we got the telephone, we actually uh, did a puja of that telephone. So <laughs> those were the days uh, of uh, pre-liberalization period which was dominated by a particular thought process, that thought process was based on the uh, economic ideology of uh, democratic socialism, that democratic socialism did not deliver anything for the common man, for to the consumers at large, it did not create job opportunities, it created all sets of inefficiencies and uh, corruption and all these questions about the black money in uh, generation used to happen during those days uh, through this whole process. So uh, that was complete disillusionment about the system, the disillusionment about the, uh, the, the model of economic development which we had chosen. And we believed in that model only because uh, it, it came down from uh, Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru and everybody f fancied uh, him so, well, so much 
and that was his legacy. Of course, his contribution in a number of other years is uh, remarkable. But in the economic uh, philosophy of this country and uh, economic planning and strategy, I think he did, uh, did not do the right thing. He, he could not envisage what could happen by the kind of economic system he was trying to uh, give to the country. So that was the story about uh, how uh, we moved towards a uh, different thought process, namely of uh, liberal economic thinking. But uh, you see, I think, uh, I mean, this was a good process. You started experiencing yourself and learning by experience, you came to realize that what was being done was not correct. And therefore, uh, after you realize that your earlier thought process has to be evolved and you can't stubbornly hold, hold those earlier views, uh, you know, in a, in a dogmatic fashion. So we became more practical and we started learning by experience and we became more uh, oriented towards the, to, towards the uh, right kind of economic thinking. I'm not saying liberal economic thinking, the right kind of economic thinking, because liberal economic thinking eventually has proved to be the right economic thinking.